This is a locally written play. It's called George's Tea, written by the great playwright Earl Lewin. He's done quite a few things, had some things up in New York, fancy thing. So, enjoy. <laughs> Everything just 
Stubbs. Oh, he's so handsome. He has wooden teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I heard it from an impeccable source. Kiss a man like that and you'll get splinters in your life. <laughs> Do not listen to your father, Becky. You know, I'm surprised that the revolts were racist with so little advance notice. Come on, Becky. You need to get ready for your guests. And your father is in control of the situation. Father, what are you going to talk to Richard about? Please don't embarrass me. I will talk to him whatever I damn well please. Watch your language, Father. Come on, Becky. Oh, that must be Richard. I can't see you like this. How did I ever get involved in this? <laughs> I'm sure you will handle everything with a plum. I wish I you had your confidence. You must come freshen yourself up. Oh. We'll go through the back stairs. <laughs> I'm Mr. Richard Smith, but you can call me Second Third. Oh, please do send him in. Yes, sir. You make me third. No, sir. Right. Are you stuck to the floor? Uh, no, sir. Well, then do come in and have a seat so that I may sit down. Oh. Pleasant day for this time of year, sir. Certainly you are alert to have noticed that. Did you hear that Colonel Washington is passing through Chestertown on his way to New York today? Not the latest of the news, but I understand that he is. The Ringgold's reception in his honor, he said, will be the social event of the season. Is it now? All this fuss over a retired soldier. You know, he's not from the best of families. Uh, and he's got no formal education, though he has two half-brothers that were well-educated on the continent. Hmm. Two half-brothers. I suppose that does equal one whole brother, but George wasn't whole enough to be educated by his whole, by his own family. He can't be very important, can he? The Colonel is very intelligent, sir, and quite embarrassing. Have you met him then? Yes, a very striking man, sir. My father has some business in Captain Eden aboard the Annapolis this morning. I came along and we met the Colonel. Hmm. Tell me, when you met him, did he smile? <laughs> he has a very regal but serious demeanor. He's quite reserved. No, sir. Now that you mention it, I can't say I saw him smile. I'm not surprised. He has wooden teeth. I'm sorry? Wooden teeth, boy! He has wooden teeth! Yeah. I wonder if he fell overboard. Would that keep him afloat? I should think it would be a negligible man of wood, sir. And if there was a fire on deck, would his mouth be the first thing to go up in flames? I should think he had his lips slammed shut. Oh. And I wonder if that cherry tree that he supposedly asked was used to make his teeth. It sort of gives the whole new meaning to the fact that teeth have roots. Good! <laughs> this seems rather irreverent, sir, considering his position. Uh, in Parliament and all. A politician with wooden teeth alive, though. Seems there isn't a whole lot of good that can be said about this man. Much good is said of his honor and courage. He faced the French and Indians with General Braddock. When the general was fatally wounded, Washington never once left his side, although his ran. He took four bullets through his clothing. Sounds like he's foolhardy to me. Anyway, that's ancient history. Ugh. You know, what does he expect running off into the wilderness fighting savages and Frenchmen? They should have given the Indians in the Ohio Territory. It's nothing but untamed wilderness. And why is he and all his friends making all this fuss about King George? Without British rule, we wouldn't survive. Who would protect the colonies if we hadn't the British army? 
begging your pardon, sir, but why should we be ruled by a king who lives on an entirely different continent? We can take care of ourselves. Our militia will protect us. On training farms. With guns. That's horrifying. No one will be safe. It's people like Washington. And you, I suppose, that would have us lose everything we've worked for. Harvard. Sorry, sir, for being so outspoken. I feel strongly about our country's future. Respectfully, sir, I sincerely hope that you will not express your opinion in Colonel Washington's presence, as I hear he does not like to be opposed and can be quite offended by that. Are you here to lecture me? My family does quite well in that regard. Oh, I just can't understand. I apologize for my impertinence, sir. I did not mean to offend you. I did not come here to discuss politics, and I sincerely hope that my observations about our prominent visitor will not color your response as to my request concerning your daughter, who I am sure we both agree is of far more importance than the politics of the day. My daughter is of great importance to me. Exactly what is your intention, sir? Well, sir. <laughs> I was hoping to accompany me to a reception this evening. Uh, anything else? I don't follow you, sir. You didn't come here to ask for her hand in marriage? Or something? <laughs> Honestly, sir, it hadn't crossed my mind. Just to go to a dance, sir. With your consent, of course. That's all. That's it. <laughs> and I sincerely hope that you and Mrs. Huffington will be in attendance as well as I am sure that my parents certainly intend to be there. I thought your father was of the same opinion as I of Washington's politics. My father is of the opinion that the Colonel wields a great deal of influence. He's friends with some of the most powerful men in America, after all. Influence? The British Army didn't even offer him a commission, and why, I heard he practically begged for it. The British Army didn't think himself such an important gentleman, and he can't be all that important after He's a fine man, sir. Everyone who knows him admires him greatly. You would be pleased to meet him. He is quite dignified and every bit of gentleman. I hope to see you this evening, sir. I believe he has already been invited. You look. You look. She wants... Father and mother wishes to speak with you. What about? Oh, I see. Well, it's been unusual speaking. I hope to see you this evening, sir. Yes, uh, we shall see. You, look... you already said that. Please, Richard, do sit down. You seem to be paralyzed. Father has this effect on people. I arrived just in time to save you. Thank God. You look beautiful. Thank you. Your father doesn't seem to like Colonel Washington very much. Oh, never mind my father. He's just jealous. Jealous? Why? Because Colonel Washington is tall, elegant, handsome, famous, courageous, and rich. And my father is, well, just rich. <laughs> he seems rather preoccupied with the colonel's teeth. He seems to think they are wooden. Do you think they are? I've never asked the colonel myself. I hear he has quite the temper. Have you seen firsthand? His teeth? His temper. <laughs> oh no, my father told me he saw a man criticizing him once and advised me never to do so. He is very smart and strong willed. He will not allow anyone to criticize his opinion or character. I think I should discourage my father from attending the reception tonight. One never knows what he could say. He could cause a riot. <laughs> He'll probably ask to see Colonel Washington's team. I'm sure your parents have been invited. You see, my parents also received a handwritten note from Colonel Washington expressing his hopes to meet them this evening. He is very astute politically and probably sent one to all the prominent merchants in town. I hope you didn't mention that to my father. You mean he didn't receive one? 
Thank God I only told this to you. What a blunder that would have been. I just, I shouldn't have even asked if he was attending. I just assumed he'd been invited. Mr. Ringgold invited him. But if my father finds out that Colonel Washington doesn't consider him a prominent merchant in Chestertown, he'll be furious. Oh, and forget about his teeth. That is something I myself take umbrage to. Oh, my father is as important in this town as any man. More even. <coughs> oh, perhaps I should discourage him from going. That's insulting. Maybe I won't even go myself. If I have to go by myself. Oh, Becky. Please forgive me. All this talk of Colonel Washington has boggled my mind. I came this afternoon to ask if you would do me the honor of accompanying me to the reception this evening. Did you ask my father? I did. Did he give his consent? I think so. <laughs> well, did he or did he? He said, that's a relief. I thought it to be quite strange. My father is strange. We'll take it as a yes if you're asking me. I am. Will you come with me? Yes. May I come by for your 5.30? You may. <coughs> Becky, I believe it's time for your visitor to leave. Yes, ma'am. I was just leaving. I hope to see you Mr. Huffington this evening. What a nice boy. Would I go? Mother, I'm really upset. Well, didn't Richard ask you? Of course he did. And I said yes. That's not the problem. Oh, Father will be really irate. Oh, but he told me he gave his permission. That's not what I'm talking about. Now you're confusing me. What are you talking about? Richard said that all of the prominent merchants in Chestertown received a handwritten letter from Colonel Washington telling them he looks forward to seeing them this evening at the Ringgold reception. Oh, this is a disaster. <coughs> Your father must never learn of it. But how will we keep it from him? Even if he doesn't hear tonight, he'll talk over a beer at Rolls Tavern and he's bound to find out. I kind of that. I think, oh, I think we'd better want to go to the reception this evening. If your father learns of it there, we will have a terrible scandal. I don't scandal. mean to hold up our hands, but Sam just delivered this letter for me and Alfred's crew. He said it's important that the, that the Lord Huffington gets it right away. Let me see that. Thank you, Morgan. Ask Mr. Huffington to come down right away. Yes, ma'am. Do you think? I certainly hope so. Well, who else from Annapolis would send a letter? I can't think of any other reason. Oh, I... Oh, so oh, let's open it. Oh, don't you dare, Becky. This is addressed to your father. Do you intend to pester me all day? Every time I turn a page, you interrupt me. I will never finish my book. Well, I am sorry to be a nuisance, but this letter came for you from the neck of the Annapolis just now. What for? Can't it wait? I don't owe them any money. I gave them a check for our last cargo two weeks ago. Oh, what could it be? What do they want now? I pay my bills. You know I do. It's probably a shut their shine book. I have a notion to go up there right now and give Captain Eden a piece of my mind. And I don't care if George Washington is on board. Oh, well. Well, well. Well, what is it? Are they sending you to debtor's prison? <laughs> it's a letter from George Washington. In his own handwriting, it could appear. He says he looks forward to meeting me and my wife and wishes to have the honor this evening at the Ringholds reception. Colonel George Washington. What? This is indeed a surprise. Does this mean that we will be attending the reception? You know, I think it might be a direct insult to Colonel Washington if you did refuse his kind overture. Well, this certainly does shed a new light on the social aspect of the man's character. Imagine singling us out. I am glad that he recognizes our position <laughs> Chestertown society. He's a much more refined and intelligent gentleman than I had previously <laughs> believed. <laughs> you are a very important man in this town, Mr. Huffington. You are the most important man in town, Papa. Let's Imagine. Do you have a proper gown to wear? Is my formal attire all cleaned and pressed? Everything is at the ready, Mr. Huffington. 
do say you'll go with uh, father. I'm sure Richard's looking forward to seeing you again. Do you think so? We had a rather spirited discussion. And he was very pale when he left. <laughs> Please say you'll go, father. It will mean so much to mother. I promise to be friendly and don't say a word about politics. I'm sure Colonel Washington is a great man everyone says he is. Looking forward to meeting. Hmm. I guess I will consider it. Hmm. He's not that bad of a sort after all, even though he does have wooden teeth. <laughs>